Welcome to the June 13th meeting of the Traffic Committee. Uh, uh, today, or right now, is 3 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and have the members of the uh, committee go ahead and introduce themselves. Michael Ackerman, I'm City Engineer. Brian Cervantes, chairing the meeting. Uh, Allison Richter, I'm helping present the meeting with West Covina Traffic. Uh, West Covina Traffic Department. Corporal Adam Seigner, West Covina PD Traffic Division. So the next item, uh, we'll go over the previously approved items at last uh, month's meeting. And those three items were the traffic review of West Service Avenue and South Evanwood Avenue. The next report was traffic review along Puente Avenue between Root Street and Orange Avenue. And the third item approved last meeting was the parking review along East Garvey Avenue South between Azusa Avenue and Citrus Street. Now we'll move into the new items that are being presented this meeting. And our Oh, and then before we... Okay just so it make it clear these items we are a um, discussion um, group <laughs> so if it passes our group then it goes to council for final approval so just so you know <laughs> perfect then we'll go ahead on to item three the new traffic committee items the first item is the speed hump request along East Temple Avenue Way, north of East Hole Avenue. So the request was for speed humps along the segment uh, of East Temple Avenue between Hole Avenue and the end of the cul-de-sac. The resident reported that vehicles tend to speed along this area and cause concern as this segment is located near churches and residential areas. As part of this initial review, we looked at three years of uh, traffic da uh, collision data, which was from April 2020 through April 2023. From that review, we uh, found two collisions that were reported and both were hit objects. The posted speed limit along this segment is 25 miles per hour. And then we also did do uh, average daily traffic or ADT counts, which found there's a 209 uh, vehicles per day. Uh, we also did a speed survey and found that the 85th percentile speed is 42 miles per hour. The street is classified by Caltrans road uh, classification map as a local road and the adjacent land use is multifamily residential as, long, as well as some churches, and the segment length is around 1,700 feet with 40 feet in width for the roadway. And so based on engineering judgment, the City of West Covina traffic request guidelines and the City Speed Hump Policy and the guidelines found in the CAM UTCD or the California Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the California Vehicle Code East Temple Street between Holt Avenue and the cul-de-sac end does not meet guidelines for installation of speed humps or additional phase two measures due to the ADT. Uh, per the West Covina speed hump policy, there has to be at least 500 vehicles per day and not exceed 3,000 vehicles per day. And like I said, this roadway uh, had 209 when we did our counts. At this time, no recommendations are proposed for the segment, and this location will be forwarded, forwarded to the police department for spot speed enforcement. Do you have any discussion on this item? Any uh, PD activity on this item? Nothing specific. No. Okay. Mike, do you have any? So right now, this item... Um, the ADT is lower than our speed hump policy allows for for installation of speed humps. We do not, um, I should say, we don't have a resident on this item. So at this time, um, it doesn't qualify for additional measures. Um, That's additional physical measures. Physical measures. Because we are recommending enforcement to Correct. try and tell the so, speeders slow down and you know, hand out some tickets. We will try our best. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll do their spot enforcement, you know, here and there. And so hopefully, because it is just some of these um, church or um, living centers that they can catch the few people that are speeding and that um, gets them. So at this time, that one is, um, it won't be going forward to level two. Um, do we... We have um, a motion to accept that recommendation at this time. It could always change. If something happens on a street, we can always bring it back and look at it later. So I'll make the motion to accept that recommendation okay. at this time. Second. Accept. Okay. Excellent. Then we'll move on to our next item, which is traffic calming along Parkside Drive between Eveningside Drive and Fairgrove Avenue. 
The resident requested to evaluate the existing conditions along the segment of Parkside Drive between Eveningside Drive and Fairgrove Avenue. The resident reported that vehicles tend to speed through this segment, causing concern as the segment is located along a hill with a sloped area on Parkside Drive. As part of the initial review, we did a three-year collision history from 2020 to 2023. And from that, we found that there was one mid-block collision during that time. The posted speed limit along this segment is 25 miles per hour, and we also did average daily traffic and speed survey counts. The average daily traffic counts for this segment was 137 vehicles per day, and the speed survey showed that the 85th percentile speed was 35 miles per hour. According to Caltrans roadway classification, the road is a local road, and the adjacent land use is single family residential. The segment is approximately 1,360 feet long with about 40 feet in width and it's on an incline. And based on engineering judgment, the City of West Covina traffic requests guidelines and guidelines found in the CAM UTCD and CVC. Parkside Drive between Eveningside Drive and Fairgrove Avenue does not currently qualify for additional measures due to the low ADT. Uh, however, this segment will be forwarded to the police department for spot speed enforcement and placement of their speed trailer. We do not have a resident on this item. Do you have another? You have a, your? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Louise, do you have their card, please? Thank you. Okay, we have a, okay, on evening side. Is this where, okay, even inside to Fairgrove. So it's at the bottom. So we do have a resident that would like to um, speak on this item. Mr. San Martin. So um, the part that was highlighted, that actually is a cause of concern because I think back in 2020, we had a collision. But also along evening side, which is a street that goes vertically, we had a, a paving project back in 2021, 20, I believe, and we had um, speed strips painted on the pavement. The company who, our, I guess, was contracted, they ripped out that section of the street, they repaved, put everything back where it was, center dividing line, but the speeding strips were not added. And that's actually an area, it's, it's right um, south of where that uh, picture ends, it's in front of a park, but evening side curves. Is a like semi um, curved area, and cars tend to speed in that section as well, right in front of the park and the On evening side itself. Yes. Yeah, a little south, south of the picture. Yeah. Do you want me to pull it up on the street view? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now, were they rumble strips like the little little dots? So well, actually, they weren't dots. They were painted strips. It was just but those really fat painted strips, and when you drive over them, your they kind of yeah. So it, it's kind of like the rumble strips, but they could use either the little dots, or they can use like a ridge in the concrete or the asphalt. So are you asking for those to be brought back they, on evening be side? Good because even with them on, cars would still exceed. Oh, this is from 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So they stay there until they're repaving, and if you were to drive to the end of that street on the opposite end, the cars coming like like that car is driving, you'll see them on the other end as well. Because there's a park, and there are a lot of kids and families that frequent that area. Can you zoom in? Zoom into those stripes. Is that like a thick thermal plastic or? And then you said that it was just recent. How, when was it um, repaved? Do you remember? I would say 20... Yeah, then 2022 or don't. 21, mm -hmm. probably. It was in the summer. It was the, perhaps a couple of summers ago. Our whole community, the whole area about repaved. It took them a long while to repaint everything all the modules. Yes, <clears throat> sometimes when streets are repaved, they do remove speed humps or speed bumps. Uh, 
local emergency response sometimes slows them down and they have required response times. Uh, sometimes neighbors don't like it, it'll ruin their shocks. And if you live around there, you hear the noise of the cars going over and you'll hear it throughout the night. So for, for those reasons, a lot of people do not like them. But I, I haven't seen this solution before. This looks like a thermoplastic to me. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't look like they did have the ridges, but if you said they had the ridges in there, and then you could actually, when you rode over them, you could actually hear them. <laughs> yeah, you could feel them. It was, it was, uh, they were, yeah, I've seen, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They have like these real small they ridges. Your but yeah, they're not like speed humps, but they are, yeah. Yeah, the thermoplastics, the thicker yeah, striping. It could, it could have been that. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, since we're talking about park side, what we can do is we can put this on our list evening side and take a look at it. And then we can bring it back. We'll let you know. Um, yeah, we did have a collision there, mm -hmm. but that was way before the, the day. Mm, okay. Uh, the car was driving in that direction, and the white cars parked. Couldn't take the curve fast, um, slow enough, and hit one of the mailboxes that's Oop. toward the, the back end. Thankfully, didn't hit the house. But yeah, that, we have had a collision. Okay. What we'll do? Do you have your email on here? I do. Okay. So what we'll do is contact you, and then um, just write your little request to us so we have it and then we have a new form just and then we'll um we'll let you know just to fill it in so that we can get the process going and submit it to us and then we'll take a look at those and then now because um we have a new process so if we decide that it that we should bring them back with the ridges or whatever we would need like mike said um to get your neighbors to sign a petition at that point, but don't do it until we tell you right. that um, it, it's, you know, <laughs> it could, we can do it at that point. And then um, that way we know that if they're installed right here, those people that are next door <laughs> are not going to complain because we don't want to install something. And then the next week we have a guy saying, hey, take them out. I hear this all night. And it does happen. <laughs> Because sometimes the person that wants the speed humps live on a corner. <laughs> and they're not the guy here in the thump, 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 thump all night. So we have to make sure that it's, uh, you know, if it's there, everybody wants it. And the guys who are going to hear it are okay with it. All right. So it just like, um, I think Peter just gave you a form. Just fill that out. Luis. Oh, yeah. Luis gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you just fill it out, submit it to us, and then um, we'll get that. We'll look at it as well, okay? And then you have our, we'll give you our email and everything you can communicate back and forth. All right, so on Parkside at this time, even though it's quite long, the ADT was really low. The speed survey did show it had some speeding, but hopefully if PD is able to do some spot enforcement, we can um, see how that does at this time. Do we... Um, so this one, we're going to forward to police department with the speed trailer, if they have that available on park side. And then we will bring back the evening side. Is that, everyone agree with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. So then we'll go on to our next item, which is the traffic review of East Cortez Street between South Azusa Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue. So the resident requested uh, request was to evaluate the segment of East Cortez Street between South Azusa Avenue and Hollenbeck Avenue. The resident stated that vehicles travel at high rate of speed along the segment and reported a recent collision involving a bicycle. As part of this initial review, we did a three year uh, collision history from 2020 to 2023. And from that, we found that there was four collisions reported during that time, with one of those being a vehicle versus pedestrian or bicycle. As well, the posted speed limit along this segment is 40 miles per hour, and we did an ADT okay. count as well as a speed survey. From that, we saw that the average daily traffic was 2,736 vehicles per day, and the 85th percentile speed was found to be 43 miles per hour. 
Per the Caltrans roadway classification map, this uh, road is a major collector with one lane in each direction. The adjacent land use is single family residential as well as a school uh, to the east near Hollenbeck. Uh, the segment is 2000, approximately 2,590 feet in length with, a, with approximately 40 feet in width and no sidewalks on the south side. And parking is allowed on both sides except for in front of driveways. And based on the uh, engineering judgment, the City of West Covina traffic request guidelines and guidelines found the CAM, UTCD, and CVC, this segment currently does not qualify for additional traffic calming measures and will be forwarded to the police department for spot speed enforcement and placement of the radar speed trailer. Do we have any residents for this one? No, no residents on this one. Um, any discussion? I mean, this speed doesn't look because it's like it's, the speed limit is 40 and <clears throat> the 85th percentile is three miles over that. So I mean, we'll, we, we put our radar, our trailer out there pretty close to the Yeah, fashion. unfortunately it, it is 40. So it is posted and there are signs yeah. on the street. So, um, so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that. So at this time, it's one of those that we're asking PD to also do a spot enforcement when they can and see if they can um, catch some of those that are speeding. Um, so this one will be uh, just going to enforcement. I'll approve or agree with that. <laughs> Hi. Yep. You were okay with that? Okay. There was no residence on that one. Okay. Excellent. Then our fourth item is a red curb request at Belborn Street between Orange Avenue and Morris Avenue. For, and the request from the resident was to uh, evaluate that the red curb be installed on Belborn Street uh, at the intersection with Orange Avenue. Uh, the resident reported that vehicles are parking too close to the intersection, causing vehicles that are turning right onto Belborn Street from Orange Avenue. And they are almost rear-ending parked cars through due to the spacing. So along this segment, the posted speed limit is 35 miles per hour on Orange and 25 miles per hour on Thelborn Street. The length of available parking between driveways. Uh, so for Thelborn Street, at Orange Avenue, there's approximately 80 feet on the south side and Thelborn Street, there's approximately 56 feet on the north side. And the Thelborn Street is approximately 30 feet in width and based on our preliminary review and engineering judgment, the City of West Covina traffic request guidelines and guidelines found in the CAM, UTCD, and CVC, the re recommendation is that 20 feet of red curb should be installed on Thelborn Avenue on both the north and south side of the curb approaching Orange Avenue per CAM, UTCD, section 3B.19. As well, during the site visit, it was noted that the existing crosswalk on Orange Avenue at Thelborn Street had non-compliant uh, pedestrian signage that should be updated to meet the CAM UTCD guidelines. And for this item, it's uh, recommended, as I said, to install 20 feet of red curb in the west lane of Thelborn Street on the north side and south sides of Thelborn Street as it approaches Orange Avenue. Remove and replace existing signage with new neon yellow green fluorescent pedestrian warning signs double-sided with downward facing arrows on both sides of the street at the existing white crosswalk and to repaint the white standard crosswalk with ladder striping. All right, we do have a resident on this one. Um, Jesus Nova. Novoa. Novoa? Yes. Okay. Uh, you mentioned it was 25 feet from- 20 uh, feet, oh. 25 feet from the, I guess the radius to the centennial point. On front of my resident, they painted the whole front of my house red. Where is your residence? Between one and four. Is it on your orange? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that was done. On the north uh, west point. Okay. So if you mentioned Can 25 you feet, uh, what they did for my resident, it was kind of, it's not really legal. So it's like there's no work for my kids now that they're grown to park the vehicles. Uh, the house was built in 1951, that has never been painted red. So now, the neighbors have been consistent with paint. She's gonna call up Street View. So you live on the northwest corner, on orange though, which, 
This, yeah. okay. So there's red curve right here. Yeah, can you, yeah. So this whole thing was painted. Yes. Is it two lanes or one lane? Uh, it looks like it's on orange. One it's one lane, so they made a parking lane, or I mean a, yeah. The side stripe. Yeah. Well, that was that was requested by also by me years back to mm -hmm. reduce the speed on that street. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I did a did petition, and all uh, we kind of wanted residents wanted to stop signs in between. Uh, was it Padre and uh, Pacific? Uh, actually, not Pacific Lane. Uh, what is it? You get this Padre or so? Well, could, one of those streets just to break down the speed, because now people just are still speeding through that street daily. On orange, like are we talking orange, orange or Thelborn? Orange. orange. Okay, so orange yeah, is a larger orange. street, yeah. I mean, the other person that's complaining has their, their issues on Thelborn. Okay. But if, if those, those curves that are, if Thelborn is being paid in red, so where are my kids supposed to park? Thelborn is only 20 feet of red. Well, why was it completely painted on orange? Oh, I don't know. That was I mean, if it's, if said it's several years ago. By the, <laughs> required by the, he said a program. The CAMUTCD. Well, that's for line of sight, so I'm not sure why that whole section was painted red. So, well, that's what I'm saying. It has some red, but not the whole way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is only a section. And it looks like it's just for line of sight. Okay, and your house is where the white truck is? It's right Correct. here, yeah. Three, two, one, by four. So. It's a lot of red. Yeah, it's a lot of red. I mean, all we can do is take a look at line of sight and try to find why it was painted. I mean, there's a picture there. It's, it's not that it's, I'm just No, we have to, head. when we paint red curb for line of sight, we have to see where a car exits and they look a certain direction each way, and depending on the speed and the lane width, that's how much red has to be painted. Okay, you gotta, well, but see, my, my, my argument is that that home was built in 1951. I don't think there's been less traffic or more traffic. The view has been the same. Yeah. The property has not gotten bigger. So I think what she's saying is if they do the analysis and it doesn't need to be that long, they can paint it back great so you can park in front of your house the again. The analysis was done years back when I came back to, to ask why was it painted red? And they said, oh, because they never wanted it. You know, like, wow, okay, that was Jose, somebody from the street. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, so how do I go about getting this removed? Oh, it's, it's going to take you years. Like, no, we, we look at it, but we have to look at what our traffic guidelines state. So we have to do a line of sight analysis for it in order for us to remove red curve or even add red curve at that length. Now, if it's only on like this one, a side street, and the cars are turning, the cars are, are on Thelborn, like we recommended, 20 feet is one car, what, what and was, they're coming in. So what was, we what have what to see. What was mentioned by the supervisor, I believe the name was I don't know if he's still here or not, but he said what the resident wants, he wants from Edwards, uh, where it's that right now, on the south side of the road, right there, that point, all the way to my driveway, they wanted it red. I go, but they, we can't do that because that's your, that's your approach, that's your driveway. So they wanted to paint that red. I was like, he's like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to go that far because so I'm just going to paint it. Like, I mean, all I can so tell you so is. So if, if the request was to paint all the way, but he's saying, I'm not going to do it, he knew it was wrong. All I can do is way. what? We're right. in charge now, and we have our own methods that we follow strictly, Please. what the California MUTCD says, and line of sight. So we have to do engineering judgment, which tells us. Okay. So, you know, I can't tell you why it was done years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I can't just, I would, be the, I would be guilty as well if I said, oh, let's get rid of it, because without doing the well, analysis. Well, <laughs> so without doing the analysis. The so. recommendation here, though, is to paint the other side of this frontage, right, for 20 feet after the yeah. curb return? It's only on Thelborn, right yeah. here where the cactus is. Yeah. yeah the but it's right here. here. That's 20 feet here. on each side. Yeah. It's got to be from the radius, right? 
Correct, where it starts to be flat. Yeah. You know where the curve, but then it has the, the cut in the sidewalk where it starts to be so flat. So it's still it his frontage, right? It would be starting here. So it's not the center of the radius to 25 feet oh, back. Here. So the curve is, oh, okay, okay. this is the curve, where, where that tree this is. is the radius. Oh, On my other side, it has to be painted from this, but this is the center of the curve, all 25 feet back this way. No, it's from where the ECR is. You got the BCR, the ECR. That's yeah. the radius. So it's been, uh, begin curb return and end, end curb, curb return. return. So, so the painting, you're not allowed to park around a curve, so they never so paint it. So it would be the center of the curve. Right? It wouldn't be the center, it'd be the end. Be so do you see how the red stops where the curve yes. starts, where right. it currently is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they won't start until after the curve and then go 20 feet. Or the see, cactuses. My, my yeah. is like, why, was it, why is it now that we decided to paint it? I live there now, I'm the resident there for 20 years, or is it because, what is it? For, I mean, on Felborn, I mean, you mean? The now with the red, always got to be painted red. On Felborn? Um, both, orange and the Felborn. The Felborn is because Just, there's an issue with cars coming around the corner and rear-ending a car other, that's parked next to the cactus. On the other end, on Morris, Felborn and Morris, which is the east side of Felborn, Morris runs north-south. Those residents weren't affected when they initially painted my curb red. And it's and that street more is it's busy, speeder. I mean the city decided on that. It just the all it was the focus was just on three two one. I can't tell you. I don't have the history. Well, so three, all I can tell you three, is that three, we'll look at it. That be, uh, That's what we can do. And then um, Luis, can you give him a a fill out the request so it's not lost we have it on record and uh, we have that you came and we have notes so we can go out and look at that as do well. we have a record of the accident where somebody was rear-ended going around that curb return Those are my vehicles, sir. oh so oh, so somebody did so, rear-end you there yes. so you and were two of my cars were rear -ended. And no. that, was, that was a Baldwin Park PD that was not paying attention when he was doing it and are you in favor of the red curb then there so people don't hit your cars or there's <laughs> I mean, been an issue though the issue is always on orange I and mean, if you, the records indicate there's been multiple accidents on this street from Puente to Pacific Lane. right I mean there's one that was just recently it was a motorcycle accident uh, previous to that there was a person that was exiting on the workman making a left turn, mm -hmm. orange, truck struck, and almost fell out of the car. That happened maybe less than six months. And what about that six cactus? Months. Is the cactus within the right of way? The street right of way, if that's blocking people's view while they're turning? Well, those could be removed, but I mean, that's, I don't think, because the fence is there, I don't think it's anything that could be blocking any obstruction, but I guess if you go back to the picture, Go back to the other one, not this Let's one. Let's go take the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the more recent person I was talking about. Oh, yeah, this is not orange. Yeah, orange. yeah. Mm -hmm. turn around. Yeah, there you go. Zoom into the cactus. Not zoom in, but yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah, so the fence is probably on the right away line. Yeah, but at least it has. Rod iron in between. Well, for me, it'd be a big bummer if my uh, whole frontage was painted red and nobody could park there. But also, if you don't want people getting in accidents. Right. Yeah. So I think we should go back and just double check the red curb that's existing on orange. See if it needs to be that long. Maybe give you a space adjacent to your driveway approach. See how long that is. Are we holding off then on Felborn, the 20 feet on each side, or do we? It's odd as for well? me to put the red curb on that side of the corner, right? Because you already have it on orange. Yeah, it's on orange. So the only purpose is to so people don't park there. Well, I mean, people it park was... on the side of the street all the time. If cars run into them. What can you do? Okay. But if the homeowner doesn't care, and 
rather. You're not allowed to park there, but nobody gets hit. Or well, the, the cactus the, could be removed. That's what it is that my kids can park when they come visit me or when they're there spending the night. It's like, because they can't park in front of the house because it's red. And recently, one of my, my daughters got a ticket. Just She went inside to drop out the dog, came back on, and the officer was already giving her a ticket. It's like, oh, sorry, you know, can't park here. It's like, I just get in and out. But it's red. It's part of the red. Red is red. You oh, know, no, you're L A D W P. I understand that, but it's, I just figured that it's not right. It wasn't proper the way that it was painted stripe all the way red for the residents. Well, I understand the rules. you got to follow the rules. Yeah, if it's red, it's red, but all the way through. Yeah, I would double check that. If it's not a sight distance item on the, the northerly red one, maybe remove that. Maybe recommend removing cacti. I don't know if that would, if you love those cactus or. I could remove it. No, there's no problem with that. It's just, you know. If you wanted better sight distance around the corner, because it's on, it would free that up. Okay. Because on the other brothers, too, on this side, it's got the same cactus, but that was taller or higher on the south side of the yeah, can we rotate the street view around to the other side? Mm -hmm. So that they, those those get there, but nobody's an issue with that. You know, oh, just in my residence. On the other, yeah. Oh, on the yeah, just all those uh, little palms and. And if you move forward, you see that's more that that, that really obstruction of the, of the view. The cars couldn't even more the palm. Yeah. A lot of people cars. shouldn't be parking there anyway. Yeah, you're right. You got a. You have a um, yeah, crosswalk. So. Yeah. Well, okay, well, we can take a relook at this and look at uh, both sides. Do you have an opinion on that? Okay. No, I, I agree. Like, <clears throat> we should reevaluate the other side. Okay. Stuff. We have it down, and you fill in your request so we have it Just in our records. Yes. So let's do the stuff yeah, and you can give it to um, one of my people, and then we'll have it as a record, and then we get the process going, okay? All right. We'll move to the next one. Mm -hmm. Well, did we want to hold off on that red curve for now? Or? Yeah, we're going to hold, oh, we're going to vote to hold off on the red curve, okay. and we're going to reassess for line of sight. Do, do we still want to make those improvements at the crosswalk? We will. Yeah, let's vote on the cross. The crosswalk needs to be done. It's a safety issue. Yes. Yes. So um, let's okay. vote to hold off on the red for now, but go through with the crosswalk. Do we have a? Yeah. I'll make them. Yes. OK. <laughs> Good answer. Yes. yes. Can that also be done also for the schools on Monte Vista? We'll have to. Yeah, you know, we have. Obviously, you travel down that path that you know, is not. Even right. Well, we have to go with what we have on oh. the agenda for now. Yeah. But you could put a request. But just so you mm -hmm. all know that the city, we're going to find out hopefully the beginning of July whether the city gets a grant. It's an ATP grant, and it's going to put so school signage upgrades for every school in West Covina. So we'll have all the older signage and all that upgraded. So hopefully we get the grant. If we don't get the grant, then we'll still go through our process and we'll have to look at them each time we meet and slowly upgrade all of them. So, all right. Yeah, to answer your question, yeah, that would be an additional request to upgrade the signs at that school. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put that on your list. <laughs> This way we have a record. Everything that comes in from residents to us, we have a written record. Who requested it, when it was requested, so that it doesn't fall through the cracks. I mean, we have, we have a long list that we try to go through, so it's not going to happen like tomorrow, but it is on our list then as soon as you turn it in, okay? All right. What's next? All right. Excellent. Then our fifth item will be the traffic review of Belinda Avenue and Merced Avenue. So this request came from the school crossing guard and was for a review of traffic conditions at the intersection of Belinda Avenue and Merced Avenue. The resident expressed concerns that there had been two traffic accidents, one vehicle and one pedestrian at this intersection and has requested that protected left turn phasing be installed or other measured to make the intersection more visible to protect 
uh, crossing pedestrians. As part of this initial review, we did a three-year uh, traffic collision history. From that, we found that there were nine collisions during that period. Uh, eight were vehicle against vehicle with one vehicle and pedestrian. Uh, the posted speed limits for this intersection is 40 miles per hour for uh, Merced Avenue, 40 miles per hour for Belinda Avenue, and 25 miles per hour in the school zone for Merlinda Elementary School. Uh, the intersection is signal controlled. Uh, we also had uh, available ADT counts. Uh, for Merced Avenue, the ADT that we were able to see was 8,658 vehicles per day. And for Belinda Avenue, 18,000 vehicles per day. Uh, there is advanced signage for eastbound, westbound, and northbound travel. And for pedestrian crossing, there's a crossing guard, a yellow standard crosswalk, um, and, and both streets are classified by Caltrans as minor arterial roads. Parking is allowed on the street for eastbound, westbound, and northbound allowed on the west side only, and southbound it's not allowed. Based on engineering judgment, the City of West Covina traffic request guidelines and warrants found in the CAM UTCD and CVC, it was determined that the intersection of Belinda Avenue and Merced Avenue would benefit for improvements completed at the intersection. For this intersection, it's recommended to install turning vehicle yield to ped sign on traffic signal poles on the far side of the street. Add turning vehicles yield to ped signs on standalone posts 15 to 20 feet in advance of the intersection at the near side for all directions. Restripe the existing yellow standard crosswalk with yellow ladder striping at all legs of the intersection. And add yellow backplates to the signal heads for added visibility at the intersection. All right. Um, we do have one resident who is, or <laughs> who has come several times, Mr. Dubin. <laughs> Yes, my name is Steve Dubin. Uh, I'm the crossing guard on Balloon and Merced. Uh, I've been on the uh, corner for about eight and a half years now. And there was a problem, quite a bit of problem with the traffic. Uh, people violating speed laws, of course, not doing 25 in the school zone, not stopping for the crossing guard while people are crossing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure, you know, since it's a high volume traffic area, I've met this officer a couple of times during traffic accidents, so we're familiar, and I met the other officer who was here last time, so I got a pretty good idea of what's going on, but first and foremost, I'd like to thank the traffic committee, and I'd also like to thank Nicole Collins, who sent me an email with this uh, same photograph and everything, and uh, I really want to thank you guys for really looking into this, because I'm really concerned about the safety, not only of the students, but of course the mothers and fathers who walk the students and uh, just mainly uh, just try to keep this uh, traffic under control as best as I can every day. I have a slow down sign in front of my stop sign which some people comply, some don't and everything like that. But uh, whatever you can do at this point, I mean every little bit will help and everything like that. So I just want to let you know I, I truly appreciate all your efforts. All right, great. Anybody has any questions or anything I'd like to answer? Well, thank you for coming and thank you for your service. Um, I'll watch you down for yes, those kids. Yes, absolutely. Yes. We appreciate that. Um, do we have any no, communication? I mean, Belinda's a fast street in general, so <clears throat> I think, any, like you said, like anything's going to help. Yeah, I support these recommendations. Yeah, we're trying to make the signal more visible. So as they approach, now you've probably seen that West Covina is getting them slowly, but some of the other cities have the yellow back plates on the signal heads. I know during the day it's not as um, obvious, but at night when, you're, when the headlights hit them, it really um, brightens up the whole intersection. And then hopefully with the added signs, um, yield to PEDS, that when you're in the crosswalk that people are, it makes them more aware you know, we're hitting them twice as they approach each corner and on the opposite side of the signal. So if they're trying to make a right turn or a left, they it just gives them an added second that, hey, I better look for pets. Well, see, the problem mainly, I think, I know the Linda's the problem, but Merce said there is no left turn lane. And, of course, when people don't want to wait, they'll go from the left turn lane into the right turn lane, speed across, somebody making a left from the other side. Um, I noticed on your statistic, it said in the last three years that you had noted nine collisions. 
nine traffic out there. Personally speaking, I think it's quite a bit more than that. Because I can't tell you how many times in the last five years I've had to call 911 when I've seen uh, you know collisions and mainly car-to-car uh, -car and everything, car and truck and everything like that. But it's a wild and woolly corner, I'll say that much. You yeah, know. this as we discussed the last meeting, it's kind of uh, this is our short term that we can it's doable to do, doable to do and we right. discussed that putting in left turn phasing as they call it is really expensive. So we have to wait for funding to become available, Absolutely. and we're trying to get some more right now. We have a HSIP grant um, to put in left turn phasing at six intersections, and they the, they were the ones with the highest amount of collisions, so. They're in the design process right now. Okay. And so hopefully each grant we're trying to apply and we can add more more intersections yeah, because I it's fingers crossed yeah. you know, you're getting your grants in July and stuff like Yes, that. I hope I really hope so. I'm you know <laughs> everybody cross your fingers. So we um, so to do left turn phasing, it's like fifty thousand dollars or more a direction and unfortunately because West Covina has older poles and mast arms they don't meet the wind loads of now the now requirements for even the ones we got a grant for the six a lot of those we have to completely replace the poles and the mast arms so then now we're boosting up to like the 400,000 for each intersection so it's like, I mean, we can put in requests for that, and we know there's in the city we have a lot of intersections that we need that left turn, so we're hoping that by getting grants that helps the city pay for it, that we can um, get those going. So every other year is a grant year. <laughs> yeah, right. so, um, so next year, hopefully we put another whatever on the, on the list, and we're, you know, the grant is a competition between all cities, so you have to score pretty high. And um, I mean, there's no guarantee even if we put in a grant, but we try to do the best we can and hope <laughs> we get all of it. Yeah, so so we try to help out where we can and where we can afford to do right now. So hopefully this is like the first step, and then we can. Um, Keep looking for. Because yeah, you really can't put a price on safety. You know well, that's saying? it. Yeah. And if people would just think, you know, while they drive, especially in a school zone, because you know, I, I posted on the neighborhood app and everything. I posted it several times. Driving is a privilege. It's not a right. You don't have the right to drive. It's a privilege. And if you abuse that privilege, you know, the <laughs> like, will, they'll take that privilege away. No one yeah. would do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, shall we vote to move this to council? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, that's this one. All right, Brian. Excellent. Now onto our last <laughs> item for today's meeting, which is going to be the speed humps along East Autumn Drive between South Azusa Avenue and Double Grove, Ave uh, Double Grove Street. Uh, so the resident request for speed humps along the segment of East Autumn Drive between South Azusa Avenue and Double Grove Street. The resident reported that vehicles tend to speed through this segment and express concerns for pedestrians and bicyclists in the area. As part of the preliminary review, we did a collision history for three years between April 2020 and April 2022. Uh, with, and from this, we found that there was one collision, which was mid-block with a parked motor vehicle. According to Caltrans roadway classification map, this road's a local road and the adjacent land use is single family residential. The segment is approximately 1,670 feet and is approximately 30 feet in width. Uh, it was noted that it's narrow with parking on both sides of the street. And currently for the speed hump request, we do not have the 85th percentile speed or the ADT. And so based on the city of West Covina traffic request guidelines, the East Autumn Drive between South Azusa Avenue and Double Goat Street is a candidate for proceeding to level two traffic measures. This steps includes the collection of speed and volume data. Speed hump installation is considered a level three measure and will only be considered for installation after level two measures have been shown to be inefficient. And there is a history of speed related collisions along this segment. This item will be brought back to traffic commission when data collection has been completed. 
we do have a couple of residents yes. on this item. My name is Richard Wise. My wife is Socorro. We bought our home there on Adam Drive 23 years ago. And at that time, traffic was never a problem. It was a wide street. That's why we bought there. However, now with GPS traffic, people know that our street is a good way to get from Azusa to Lark Ellen. And it seems that the traffic has exponentially increased over time. And so what we're living on is a street with no sidewalks at all. If you walk down the street, whether you're walking your dog or walking home from school, you're doing it in the street. With people parking on both sides, you have to walk around the cars. Someone's going down the street which has a posted 25 mile per hour limit, they're always driving 35, sometimes faster, and many times way faster. Because there's no stop sign anywhere, not on the Almanac, and you can bring up the street and see it with a street view, how, how narrow it is. If you're walking on that street, it, you can be taking your life in your hands if it's dark. Uh, it's, a, it's a great place to live, and we don't have any problem with the traffic normally. And whether or not you put in speed humps that people have to listen to and complain about, we don't know anything about that. All we want is to slow them down, whether it's with thick paint to make them aware that they're you know, approaching an intersection or just tell them, hey, it's 25 miles per hour, why are you going so fast? This street is rather narrow. Yeah, there's a loose side. That's the street right there. Yeah. That's the, the, the corner of Zusa right, right behind that. If you go further down that street, you'll see what I'm talking about. Go down Autumn. Oh, there, the other there, way. There, the there, other there, way. It is a going. slight incline. See, like, right there, if you go down further, it, there is no sidewalk. Yeah. In fact, I think my, my uh, there's maybe a couple of homes that put in sidewalks. I was one of them. Uh, but with that kind of no sidewalk, you have to walk in the street when you're walking down that street. And see, there's no stop sign there. People come down that street. Yeah. Well, that stop to get it to get on Autumn Drive. I'm talking about on Autumn Drive, there's no stop sign except down yeah. at the bottom of the hill. Anyways, like we're here to just point this out. Whether I do not know what the cost involved would be to put in three or four humps on this street to slow them slow them down. Uh, I don't know if they're speeding down that street would hit a bump and then launch them into someone's house or not. I'm not those kind of dangers I'm not aware of. I just know that our home, we, we see people going down that street all the time, and they're going too fast, just too fast. Some lady came down Double Grove from uh, Azusa Avenue less than two months ago, I think it was in March. She took out three parked cars because she was navigating the curve and took out a lamppost as well. There, Luckily, there was no one in the cars, and they were all parked, but she took out all three of them. And it was a miracle she survived it. I mean, as fast as she was coming down that street. So, like I said, whether you put humps like we asked, you know, two or three humps to slow them down, or whether you put in you know, stop signs or bumps in the road, something, some kind of, you know, something to make them aware that they're going too fast, maybe that would help. Uh, we're just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. So the next step would be we're going to get the ADT mm -hmm. and the speed survey. Right. So you'll see the tubes in the road. Okay. And then we'll see what, what's happening. Um, my only concern right now is do you think your traffic has any relation to school schools? Because schools are out for the summer. No. So if I took no. traffic no, counts nothing. now... It's got nothing to do with schools. Okay, so because we have, school, you know, minimum, maximums, if you think that right. people taking their kids are going to give you more numbers, then we wait until school starts. If it doesn't matter to you, if you don't think it matters, then we're going to take it, and that's what we're going to have to base it on. The closest school is where said um, from where we are. You know what I mean? And so it's know, all whether know, parents are taking their kids and then you get another extra car on the ADT. So. You said the minimum was 500? Mm-hmm. And that 
maximum I, I is 3,000. I don't know, but I, yeah, I know that what... we see a lot of traffic. Whether or not it's 500 a day or not, I don't know. But that I don't. Did we previously recommend enforcement or the speed sign at this location? Or? Um, I think it goes also, this one will also go to um, enforcement for now. Okay. And then while we're deciding on the, the data collection, um, we'll have to look at it because my first thought is I don't want to do counts and speed because it does cost to do that. Mm -hmm. And then it's low or something and all the other <coughs> residents say, well, you didn't do it during school was out. So we want to make sure we're covered and get the highest amount, the worst case maybe is when school is in session. But that would put us probably the end of August of getting the counts. Yeah, there so. Are, there are residents that do take their children to school. I'm, so. I'm the one walking the street. Right. That's what, that's what my husband is talking about. I walk my dog. And there's parking on both sides, and right? Yeah. Both yeah. Sides. And okay. it's 30 foot. It's very tight. Out of the way. Yeah. She's diving behind parking. Yeah. yeah. No, I can see that because it's too narrow for us to put like the side stripes because you need to have an eight foot parking lane on each side and you need, you know, at least 10 foot each direction. Right, right now, if you have parking on both sides, cars have to wait if they have a big car, you know? Yeah. And we do, we do, yeah. we have to. That's so that's true. a form of some type of traffic control. Now, just so you know, we don't put stop signs for speeding because people will just barrel through them. Um, so they have to meet warrants as found in our manual that we been citing forever. It has specific warrants that have to be met. So we can look at the intersection, but each direction has to have 300 vehicles every hour for eight hours. So, you know, that's kind of one of the things, and it has to have a certain amount of collisions and this and that to put always stop. 300 per hour? Correct. Well, we would, yeah, that we would not have. So that's why I'm saying, and then if you put in unwarranted, they call them, stop signs, in some cases, then, then you'll be back telling us, well, they're not stopping. Well, because they don't feel that it's, it's for right away, not right. for speed. So we'll have to look at other issues, okay. other measures. The petition we had sent out, mm -hmm. everyone signed it. Yes. Everybody agreed with what we were saying. So, but Only we still have to, okay. said, I don't like it because it'll wreck my shocks on my truck. Yeah. But that was one guy out of 45. Mm -hmm. You know, the other 44 of us said, yes, do it, because something needs to be done. So then we have the policy that we have to go through level one first, which is take it to police. They do some spot enforcement. Okay. Level and two, we, we do some that. signage. We, we have done that. We've done, I mean, I'm sure you guys see us sitting at Azusa and Autumn yeah. all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're on the other side of the street. Yeah, but we, we also monitor traffic coming <laughs> east. <laughs> the radar goes a this, long way. <laughs> this, one's, this one, was, I'm going to be honest, this one's kind of hard because it is so tight and narrow. Because I've driven down that street before. Only one car fits through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 30, so it's 30 hard feet to do. curb. I mean, I'm not saying we can't do it, but we'll, we'll try our best. But it, it's only a, basically a one-way street. Yeah, you know, one for the radar, yeah, they only reach. Were there bot stops located on here? Did I see that one? Yeah, is that Azusa? Right at Azusa. Or, like, you could even talk about putting, like, some paint down where, like, approaching, like, the stop signs mm -hmm. or, you yeah, know, like, a couple right stripes here. or something. Those are the right. rumble yeah. strips. But we do monitor that area for traffic. It's just, it is, I know it is. You're street, the street. I wait cars, go, <laughs> cars go pretty quick down the autumn, I do know that. Are these still there? Yes. Yeah, still there. Okay. And my my neighbor Brian down the street had those. He, he, I think he petitioned to have those. Put and do you guys like those? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, they rumble your car you and you slow you down a little bit. Put them all the way down the street. We're gonna pave your street in cobblestone. You'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah. never yeah. go fast. <laughs> okay. Maybe at Almanac if they put them there too. Yeah, you can put them like near the stop sign, yeah. just like just to bring awareness or something. Back across streets. Okay. So, like I was saying, though, the first step is um, get the counts done, right. and then in the meantime, PD will monitor. I mean, he's not going to be sitting there every day, but off and on, yeah. to catch anyone that is speeding. 
So, and then we'll get the data back and see what we can, what it shows us. And okay. see what we can do from there. That's, okay. That's all we can do. Officer, come to our house. Sit on our couch. <laughs> 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 those people. Yeah. I think personally, just based off of my training experience with this street, it's more of that slope. Like, oh, yeah. it's we didn't even see the real slope because it gets pretty steep gets, a little bit farther down the road. A little bit down so. that slope, so yeah, kind of close to Double Grove. Right. So yeah. that's where you get people speeding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty far, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's pretty steep once you get it to it. Oh, and then right here, so yeah. it starts yeah. to get That's super narrow. Right. That's my house right there. We built those. We had to put those sidewalks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So right there is like when you, it. it's pretty steep. So you get. You see that stop sign sign right there? Mm -hmm. so stop they, ahead. They put that in like less than probably about ten years ago, because at the at the end of the street, that stop sign was not there. There, there was no stop sign. It just it dead end at Double Grove and no one would even stop. They'd just swing around the corner. Mm -hmm. And now they do because of that stop sign. But before there was nothing there. And the thing that if you wait till you get that far down that slope, if you're down at the bottom at Double yeah. Grove, they're already slowing to stop. So they're not you're not going to catch them speeding. It's when you're half a block up the street when they go by your house at forty. Mm -hmm. And that's what scares us. Sit on I'll feed you. <laughs> okay, right. we, we understand. We get it. Just so, yeah, no, we have your request. And okay. like I said, my gut tells me we're going to wait until school starts so that we get the maximum amount of the speeding because then you have the teenagers that are going to school. Then mm -hmm. you have, you know, okay. so that we cover it. Okay. Because then we know what the data is instead of you guys will always doubt if we do it now that, oh, well, the teenager next door wasn't driving, so the speeds are lower, you know. So this way we, we know what it is. I mean, we only take it for 24 hours, but it's okay, usually so a good sample, so. When school was back. What was your uh, address? 1611. East Autumn Drive. <laughs> Having some cold water. You guys can, you guys can all <laughs> This guy will, <laughs> will be happier. So when school resumes. Okay, are we good with that, Mike, Adam? Okay. And you guys, we have the process, so um, I think we agree with that. So. Gather the data and go from there? Yeah. And then we'll... Um, Thank you. You. Do you, we do have your thing. If you want to email us at, um, what is it, traffic? Traffic. Yeah. yeah traffic <laughs> trans -tech. I've had a long Bad day. Word. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, we've been in contact. We've got okay, you are in contact. So um, this way we can notify you when we've done the counts and stuff okay. and let you know, okay? I'm eager, I'm eager when it's done. Yeah. Just to, um, to see what it is. And you can email us anytime and we'll give you a uh, update. Okay, all of you. All right. Very good. Are we, Brian, you want to yeah. close this out there? Yeah, so that concludes our new traffic committee items. Are there any audience comments on items not on the agenda? No. Oh, we oh. have one. That's for open discussion or? Yeah. So, yeah, so. I did have mentioned with the previous years, I did a petition. I'm going down that speed limit on only. 45 is at when I first moved in, and there was a petition and a request to lower double 35, but it's still not enough because it's a residential area going what I understand should be 25. But they said it's because it's a connecting stream, because it just connects with optical, off the finger ramp, and people still want to proceed at same speed all the way to the So I mean, it could be. You know, we can't, point. okay, so I'll, I'll answer that. <laughs> We can't arbitrarily lower any speed because by law, there's a process that all speed limits are set. And in 2017, the city of West Covina had a independent company come in and they did the whole city, citywide speed survey. So all those, sit, the limits that you see are posted per the standards, 85th percentile. You have to be the closest, 
you know, five mile per hour. You can round down if there's a lot, of, if it's higher than the collision rate, that type of thing. So as you see the speed limits now is set in by law in the citywide speed survey. So if you want to, if you petition or whatever, you want to go in and change a speed limit, then it would have to go to council. A new speed survey on that segment would have to be done, set to how CBC gives us guidelines on how to do it. Then city council would have to adopt it to overrule the citywide speed survey in that segment. So it's a, it's a process. So what was the prima facie for orange? When did we? Need we didn't look at orange. Oh. So we'll, when we bring it back to look at that red, we will look at that and see what it is. And the the, the speed limit on Morris, is just the same north south street, stood at twenty five. So why orange? The orange is a bigger street. That's yeah. Probably. But it's still a residence. Well, it, it all depends what it's classified. It's yeah, it could be if it's a local streets are usually, but they don't have to be 25. They're usually 25, local residential streets. Then you have collector streets and you have arterials. So those are all, you know, depending on what they're classified. And maybe it's all residential, but if the city in some general plan classified it as a collector or arterial, then it goes into different speed limits. So yeah, that could be why. Yeah, it, orange is definitely not a uh, local street. Say, it doesn't run all the way up to Valley almost, doesn't it? Orange, orange goes from the freeway all the way up to like San Diego Road. Yeah, I said North Garden. Yeah. So we'd have to look and see what it's, you know, there's a lot of factors that go in. But if you the North Garden, it just the stuff side of the And North Garden, and there's one at Pacific Lane, which is like a block away. Then. Yeah, West Covina is a big city, so <laughs> I think as the traffic and engineering department and PD, we try to go through, you know, we're going through them, but it's a big city. You know, we get requests every week for more, so we have our big list, so we're trying, <laughs> trying to keep up. One thing that I did notice that helped out at the time was that uh, speed. Um, Your feedback signs? The speed control speed. The speed yeah. Yeah. Speed feedback. Yeah. But then never got repaired. Oh. Parts were being ordered. The vendor was out, and there was just every time we call, it was just like, "Oh, we'll get back to you," but never got back. Where was that at? That's on also Salmon Orange, just past. I think it's Wyoming. If you want to put that in your email so that we can ask maintenance about it, so just give us the location. If it's, if it's still there and it's not working, then it's give us a location. It only works at maybe the first year. <laughs> but it's still there? It's still there. Mm -hmm. Where okay. was it near again? Orange? Uh, I believe this one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Thank you. Was it orange and swanny? Yes, yeah, correct. Right. Right. Just yeah. north of there. There's oh, there. Yeah. 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 Yes, right there. Yeah. South of Swan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the the they need to put one of those on our street. Mm -hmm. People can see what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, it, yeah. no, but it, uh, rather than putting in speed bumps, yeah. if, if they got that shine in their face, hey, you're doing 40 on yes. a 25, maybe they would stop. And there are uh, reports done that say they are just as, as effective as speed humps. Yeah. yeah. How so much are they? I'll pay for it. They're about $10,000. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, like 200, I'll pay for it. Yeah, speed humps are 10 grand a, a speed hump. Per, st per, speed, per hump? speed hump, yes. So everything is. What if I bought the asphalt? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know that's, the engineers would have to put out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. That's what I was thinking. I, that maybe that would stop it. We'll have to see but, what the data comes up. and. Yeah. I had asked the committee for one of those speed signs by the school, too. And they said they would be doing it. Well, 
Maybe like 60, 70 on the lunacy. Well, if we get our ATP grant, then yeah, some of those things are in there. So let's just hope everybody have good positive thoughts. So. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We're closing out the Traffic Commission. We appreciate all of you coming. And you can email us and get updates on your items. Thank you. And when's our next meeting? Next month is July. July 2nd? July, July second? No. Second. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. <laughs> it should be like the 10th or something. The 11th. Uh, July 11th. Because 4th of yeah. July is a Tuesday. July 11th. Yeah, July 11th. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.